Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to twitch.tv forward slash ice cream uploads. My name is Graham Day, and this man in a box over here, uh, who doesn't have the ice cream scoop logo behind him on the TV, <laughs> is. I have no idea where that's gone. <laughs> that's the man. Play again. They call the bid. So if you are watching on twitch.tv forward slash ice cream uploads live 10 a.m., uh, well, I said 10 a.m., it's 20 past, um, then. And, and you watched yesterday and the days before, the day before, should I say, you will have, you will be well aware that we are working with a makeshift studio in the ice cream studios at the moment. We are doing some 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 housekeeping, you know, wires are like, well, you know, if you've got your own setups at home, cable management can be quite difficult if you've got some screens and a PC and a console. Now, imagine that where you've got uh, two headsets, some headset stands, uh, multiple consoles, multiple screens. You've got HDMI splitters, PCs, and pfft, we have a lot going on in the ice cream studio. So <laughs> our cable management got to the point where it was like crazy. So we've um, stripped the studio apart so that we can sort all that stuff out. And as a result, Bibby looks now like he's in some sort of like he's he's been forced to make a statement against his will. Uh, <laughs> But yeah, that's why he looks like he's in that setup. I, though, I'm at home. Yay! Um, be because that's the way it works. We give you the scoop every single weekday, ladies and gentlemen, even. Uh, 10 a.m. Monday to Friday. Uh, live on twitch.tv forward slash ice cream plus. We then package this up into an on-demand podcast that you guys can pick up on our YouTube channel about an hour or so after the show ends. And then roughly a an hour or two after that, we will have you the audio versions of the podcast too on iTunes, Spotify, SoundCloud, and Google Play. So make sure you get involved. If you are watching live on Twitch, make sure you get involved in the chat. It's kind of like there, there-ish. Yeah, make sure you get involved uh, because everyone that watches the video on demand, they don't have an opportunity to chat and discuss what we are talking about. And what are we talking about? I hear you say, well, we bring you the biggest and best pieces of news from the games industry and beyond. But yes, I am back, and do you know what? I'm actually gonna, I'm actually gonna stick Bib on the shelf, even though he's probably not gonna quite work. Oh, they're coming for you, Bib. Yeah, uh, if for anyone who's driving, that's the police that's outside our <laughs> office waiting to come and get me. Yeah, I mean, don't feel free, don't pull over to the hard shoulder or anything, because you will just look like an umter. It's not at your end; it's at ours. Uh, so the scoop. Uh, shoulder, which is the name of my slide. Where, uh, there you go. It's not quite working at the moment because Bibby's not in the right setup and the, the, the green screen issue won't work. So usually we'd have Bibby sat on there. But but this, see this? I am now a streamer with a fridge. Yes. So I have a fridge with my cold coffees, my Cokes, <laughs> bottle of Amaretto, which you can't see because of the reflection. But yeah, streamer with a fridge. Yeah. Uh, so shout out to my better half, Danielle, that bought me those. And I also have, and I can't show you right now. I mean, I... I have potential, do you know, I'm, I'll show it you on the floor. So obviously you can see my box of my key lights and stuff. Uh, but like down there, see all that stuff on the floor? That is my Elgato, not Elgato, that's me getting distracted again. That is my Nano Leaf technology. So I have some Nano Leaf panels put on the wall. I t uh, t tinkered with them yesterday and they look badass. So yeah, yeah, trying to put Bibi back on the shelf and I can't do it. Can't do it. Where was he? No, Bibi, get back on the <laughs> shelf. Nobody puts Bibi on the shelf. Uh, do you know what? You can float above the shelf today. That's fine. But yes, it was my birthday yesterday. How did the uh, how did the scoop go down yesterday? Did I miss anything anything big? Uh, you always miss uh, you always miss stuff if you don't listen to me, and that goes for everybody else who doesn't watch it each and every episode. You got them right to it on your podcast services. I like it. I like it. Nice solid. Got my back. Got the scoops back. See what you're saying. See what you're saying. So what? I, I did see, I tuned in for a little bit, and so we were running through, was it the top 10 PlayStation, was it PlayStation 1 games or PlayStation games? So it was the top 10 PlayStation 1 games that defined the console. And was the first one Final Fantasy 7? Uh, number one uh, was, of course, Final Fantasy. Yes, yes, yes. Uh, I'm having uh, major, major technical problems there, so I have absolutely no idea if you're still talking. I'm going to try and fix this on the fly because that's what we do around here. So I will be back in about two seconds. Sweet. Well, I will just go to stick <clears throat> baby on the shoulder. Actually, no, actually, let, me, let me jump to a different scene. Let's go camera only. That one. There we go. Let's get rid of the bib altogether. I'm going to end that call with bib. 
so we'll leave him there we'll sort things out so just want to remind you guys that we go live in each every single weekday 10 a.m twitch.tv forward slash ice cream uploads make sure you come along if you are watching on twitch now if you're one of the guys that are watching us please feel free to hit the follow button as well which is kind of around there somewhere if you hit that follow button uh, that gives you a reminder every time that we go live so it gives you an opportunity to get involved in the action actually let me, let me see let me see uh i used to have a little no it's not that one no it's not that one ah i used to have a little animation that uh, showed you where to press the following but it's but it's gone but it's gone it's fine it's fine we don't need it we don't need it um so yes yeah, so what did everyone get up to i am gonna obviously pad for just a few seconds apologies to you guys listening on the audio uh uh, podcasts we have lost a baby from the screen he's sorting things out uh, at his end obviously with the studio being ripped apart we um are at the mercy of the tech guards i am at home do you know i wish i'd have i wish i'd have prepped for this because i could have brought you my uh my birthday goodies i could have i could have gone through things with you a little in a little bit more detail uh do you know i do have some stuff to handle which i can show you if you are watching on the video services I will show you guys, and if you're listening on the audio services, I will try to explain to you. Um, actually, I can't show you that because Amazon lovingly put the delivery notes over the top of the uh, uh, thingy, so I'm giving out my address to the world, and I ain't going to do that. Uh, but yes, I got these. So these are the nano leaf panels. I've just showed you those on the floor. They are going to go um, like somewhere kind of like here-ish down the wall uh, and link in with all of the backlight setup as well. So if I kill my current lighting in the studio... Uh, you see, I do have like a, a purpley hue, um, which is funny because the, the lights are Philips hue. <laughs> um, so yes, I have that. I have a sexy little, I didn't even know this was a thing. This is a little remote, that little, uh, I don't even know what shape you call that. Um, that Anyway, that shape thing, uh, you can program that to be specific um settings so it has 12 different sides you can have side one being purple side one being pink or whatever and if you just turn it around and put side one facing up it'll change to purple change to side two it'll be pink and so on so i've got that and then um this, i've got a little cool little thing uh, so this tiny little thing uh for those of you listening on audio services um actually i'll explain I'll explain the three things i have oh, video call from Biverino. Uh, he sounds like he's back. Yeah, I can see him. I can't hear him though. Um, but yes, I have. So obviously the Nano Leap, uh, Nano Leaf lights. That's nine panels. I have the uh, the what shape you call it? It's almost like a Kugel Schreiber. <laughs> he's back. Uh, Alistair may have fixed it. He's um, basically. We've just been ripping apart the studio. Um, so we've got a load of old dead Ethernet cables and a lot of Ethernet cables that do work that are untested. So it appears that we've been using one that potentially either has a hole in it or it's just not working as it used to do. So we just hardwired it into this part of the office rather than running through an external nice, utensil nice. or whatever. So, well, yeah, I can hear you perfectly well. I'm not stuttering on the camera, so we're looking good. Yeah, there's tiny-ish bits of stutter on, on, in video format, but the audio is good, and that's the main thing. Just showing people my uh, Nanoleaf lights, uh, my little Nanoleaf remote shape cube ball thing, uh, and then yeah. this is this this bit is so cool. This is Nanoleaf rhythm, um, and basically that tiny little thing. Um, so f for those of you that listen on audio services, I have a, a, a triangular Nanoleaf panel in my hand, uh, all I do is I take this little nano leaf plug-in thing, stick it in the end of my light strip, and that's it. Then my light strips now will re react to noise. So if I'm sat in the studio playing some games, I've got some music pumping out through the speakers, then all of the lights and stuff will react to that too, which is pretty pretty tasty, pretty tasty. But anyway, anyway, that's enough padding. We have baby in the studio, we have audio, <laughs> and we have a very a sausage roll in my hand. They see you rolling. It's not the first time I've sung that to you this morning. It's either. tasty. <laughs> uh, yes, we have a very tasty piece of news. Bibby, the reason we aren't in the main studio is because we did actually get it finished last night, but Bibby heard this news and had a little bit of an accident. So Alistair is in there spraying the whole thing down now uh, so we can get it all clean and ready, hopefully for the end of the week. But this 
ladies and gentlemen, is the news. If you've seen it on our tweets already, you'll have a little bit of an idea. But we can tell you that as of yesterday, Wesley and Paul from Eurogamer confirms that Resident Evil 3 remake cover art leaks ahead of an official announcement. Extra, extra, read all about it. You guys can't see Bibby's face right here because the article's full screen. <laughs> but it, literally, just imagine Cheshire Cat, but but like <sighs> on stuff. Yeah, that's pretty much what it looks like. Anyway, Resident Evil 3 remake cover art has leaked ahead of an official announcement from Capcom. The cover art, which Eurogamer sources have confirmed to be the real deal, was spotted on GameStat via Reset Era. GameStat tracks additions to PlayStation Network, and on it can be seen cover art for the Japanese and international versions of Resident Evil 3 Remake. Uh, so, for those of you on audio service, we're looking at the article now, and it's got cover art from um, Resident Evil 3, Biohazard, RE3, and Biohazard RE3 Z version. So Eurogamer sources previously told us that Resident Evil 3 Remake is real after it was mentioned by YouTuber Spawnwave, who said it was on track for a 2020 launch. Back to the cover app, and we see Resident Evil star Jill Valentine with a reworked look, as well as Carlos Oliveira, one of the surviving members of the Umbrella Biohazard Countermeasure Service, UBS, uh, UBCS, sporting a new hairdo. And of course, we see Nemesis itself, the intimidating villain from the original. Given this leak... An official announcement is surely not far off. The Game Awards on the 13th of December sounds like a good show. And I think that kind of is all... I say kind of, that has to be. That absolutely has to be. Things may change potentially from Capcom's side. Obviously, you look at the video games industry, you look at how announcements are made. You get the biggest announcements around the biggest events. So, so... You'll get um, huge announcements at E3 launching new IPs. I mean, they may they may not turn out to be good. Shout out to Anthem, um, but <laughs> but you get huge announcements around big en- uh, big events. So obviously, Resident Evil Three at this time of year would be a massive announcement. So there's only one event for that where that can happen. The the, uh, the Game Awards taking place December thirteenth has to be that. Uh, so nine days away, and we'll have official confirmation. However, that may change now. The cat has, is out of the bag because obviously GameStat has scraped that from the PlayStation Network upload. So we may see Capcom going, okay, well, we kind of need to own this now. So they may push something out a bit sooner and then tease like full announcement during the Game Awards. It may tweak, um, but but yeah, are you excited, babe? <laughs> oh, it's it's it, it is what it is. Uh... Never really been one to be excited about Resident Evil games that are potentially coming out. So, yeah, I might end up playing this. Of oh, bloody course, I'm excited to play this one. Uh, and a big shout-out to every single person that sent me either a link to the article, mentioned it on Twitter, tagged me, DM'd me, or texted me yesterday, because there must have been about 40 of you saying, are you excited? It's like, yes, I've got a template message. Now, especially <laughs> Lincoln Hood that's in the chat now. Thanks to Amy that DM'd me yesterday. Uh, shout out to Sean. I don't know if he's knocking about. Usually just lurks in here. He's another one that sent it to me. Um, but yeah, it's uh, I, it's going to be great. I mean, I really enjoyed, obviously, the original one. Uh, and the way that um, they remade the second one was incredible as well. Uh, it was a... I want, I want to say it's kind of true to the original, um, but it also put a brand new spin on how the second played out with uh, the camera being behind them. Slight storyline changes uh, across the board. So we'll see how this one goes. Uh, the fact that it could potentially be coming out next year is largely due to the fact that Raccoon City Textures was already created for Resident Evil 2. Um, they just need to add a few more things to it. <clears throat> hey, like, uh, the, the, oh, I can't remember what part of the city it is. It's, but you go down into a bar, basically, and there's like a road down there, and I can't remember what that's called. Um, but they'll just have to create little small assets like that, really. I don't like the way that the Nemesis looks in this, if I'm being perfectly honest. I posted a tweet last night saying it looks like Gru's been in a house fire um, in the second picture. Uh, sorry, the last picture. It looks that's like what? Gru. Uh, Gru from Despicable Me. Oh, I thought you said Groot, as there. in like... No. Uh, the little baby Groot. Yeah, yeah. No, uh, Groot from Despicable Me with the with the big nose and the long face kind of thing. It just looks like he's been in a house fire. His teeth are way too big in that. Um, knocked over. That's... <laughs> yeah, uh, it looks it it looks odd. I don't particularly like that model. I think they probably could have done with making him a little bit more like he was in Resident Evil One, or especially in the films because he looked mint in the films. 
they could have uh, taken that rather than reworking it completely. But Jill Valentine is looking hot. She looks well younger in this uh, what, than she does in the game. On that, one thing I was just doing then, well, two things I was doing then. I, some reason, my stream chat isn't loading up on my uh, stream, so I've just had to like uh, load that up on a separate screen then because you mentioned that um, Link was in the chat. Morning, Link! Um, my chat wasn't loading through, so I've not got any messages until now. So, yes, good morning! <laughs> so, yeah, that's the reason why I was kind of like ignoring you all. I mean, I am a little bit ignorant anyway, but I've only just got through to my messages uh so yes uh, i do have the chat now but one thing i was going to say was you mentioned jill valentine one thing i did see when we did the article um when we covered there we go uh so, oh, there we go ah Ugh. lost my pen lost my pen ah so as you can see <laughs> on screen there so jill valentine there on the right hand side of the screen um when we covered the article last week uh jill valentine uh was mentioned within that in terms of is her outfit going to be shown in the game as it is because there was they were saying it's very uh 90s uh japanese video game in terms of she's got pretty yeah. much a boob tube or whatever is that what you call it is that what they call it it's something, something like that in the in the article anyway maybe wrong um but that's not very good for uh really taking on zombies and you know doing sort of like life or death style <laughs> situations so would she be uh, true to that. In, in other words, will that be pulled through to uh, the actual video game? So it's interesting to see. That's what she looks like there. And then where did I have uh, the article? So there. So they have kept the same sort of top, um, that sort of blue top design, but obviously straps and it just yeah. it just looks a little bit more action uh, sort of ready as opposed to just going. Uh, I can't think of a politically correct word to say. Almost naked. There we go. Yeah. <laughs> but yeah, but yeah, it's uh, in the original one. Uh, the you could unlock a um, a you could you could get a boutique key basically, which meant that as I was mentioning on that road where you've got the bar, there's a boutique down the road, and you can go in and you can actually put Jill in different um jill in different costumes now there was i've just had to google what what there was again because i completely forgot but there was a police woman one like a saturday night fever one and then one in like bondage leather bondage um, leather is, yeah it's a it's a bit of a weird one but there was also um you could be you could get the outfit from dino crisis one which is obviously made by capcom as well so you can look like regina which again is just like a all leather outfit but she has red hair rather than brown don't know whether or not they'll include something like that in this again world oh losing a bit of audio from the biberino then uh one thing I, I, it's kind of an interesting one to see because obviously there is two sides to the story um in terms of the outfit so obviously jill valentine wearing a blue boob tube top was very 90s pop you imagine seeing spice girls wearing fluorescent green versions of that or stuff kind mm. of thing so it's fine if you're doing um magazine -y kind of things but but putting that into a real worldy kind of game is a bit it's a bit odd so it's but it's interesting to see, it's nice to see that they've they've taken the design and then just kind of like made it a bit more realistic in terms of yeah okay we've not just gone a bit like sleazy pervy um but we've we've tried to keep it true enough to the original in the fact that she's got black pants in that in that image can't tell if it's like miniskirt or shorts or full combat pants Excuse me. Or um, plus, she's also got the uh, the blue top. So it's, it's it's nice in the same way that we saw it with Lara Croft, Tomb Raider. Um, obviously, them short brown shorts and then that kind of like bluey same sort of thing, boob tubey top, which turned into uh, a strapped vest top in the more recent games. It just kind of made it a bit a bit nicer for like let, let's use my house for example. If I wanted Chloe to sit around and play Tomb Raider with me. Um, It'd just be a bit odd having like, like, boobs out, yeah, lads, lads, lads. Yeah. Bit, well, Chloe sat there, where, so it's nice to see that they kind of modernised it in that sense. Yeah, but I mean, even the even the later two Raiders, like the newer ones, she was wearing like Lara Croft was wearing like a strap. I don't even know what you call them. Like, I'm not a connoisseur of ladies' clothing, but it's like a yes. a, a small yes. top thing with straps going across the top. It wasn't anything super revealing, but I'm sure it was. It is what it is. It's uh, the way that these games are. Like Lincoln Oz just said, but the game's still taking place in the night. Is I think so, but in the last game, in the remake too, they had USBs and things like that knocking about and like flat screen computers. 
So I don't know whether or not it's staying true to the 90s or it's just 90s uh, influenced kind of thing. I'm not too sure. So yeah, I don't mind. I don't mind the game staying true to the 90s. That's fine. Um, but it's it's all about true to real life as well in terms of a soldier in the 90s wouldn't be running around in a in a boob tube short shorts and whatever, especially if they're having to like climb over fences, go through barbed wirey bits or whatever the hell kind of stuff. Your legs would be ripped to to shreds. So it's nice to see that. They're sticking with the styling, but kind of like updating it. So yeah, my chat's working on screen now. I don't have to keep jumping back to yeah. the uh, dashboard to see the comments. Uh, one thing I, I did see, though, when I jump back to the dashboard, thank you very much for the uh, nine-month subscription. Next Gen Renegade dropping his tech, uh, his tech skin. Do we know? No, no, no. He's Twitch Prime. Next Gen Renegade dropping Twitch Prime in the chat. So if you do have a Twitch Prime, feel free to use it on the channel. Obviously, we'll, we'll take it. That's fine. Uh, Flat screens and that stuff uh, was in the Umbrella uh, umbrella Lab. You can forgive that. It's, uh, it's a kind of sci-fi element. Um, well, yeah. it was. In, I'm sure it was in the halls as well of the Raccoon City Police Department. Um, but yeah, you can get USBs and things like that. So I imagine it, it, if, if... I think it alluded to that it was kind of present day. But I'd, just, I'd like to think that the timeline's still consistent, that it's still being placed in the 90s. But... With things like USBs knocking about and whatnot, um, I'm sure they had a mobile phone as well. I'm fairly certain at some point someone answers a mobile phone, which obviously there was in the nineties as well. They were just messy, um, but there wasn't like, yeah, there was there was no touchscreen or anything like that, was there? It was just large buttons, large antennas, and things. So did they um, in the Resident Evil Two remake? Did they? time reference did they give it any time stamps was it was no it rooted any sort of time zone so maybe they no. just kind of gone do you know what okay well we'll try to keep it true to normal but also make it a bit time relevant or time free maybe so in terms of they've probably mm. rather than sticking it to the 90s or making it more modern day they've just gone okay well we're just going with with a uh, whatever uh time it is now and then we'll just go from that uh ooh, the stars dongle what does s-t-a-r-s stand for it, it, I know it's some at Special Tactics stuff. and Rescue Squad. Yeah, is that, is that like a rac Raccoon PD like yeah. thing? Yeah, yeah. RPD, yeah, yeah. I'm just trying to find a picture or a um like a model of Nemesis from Resident Evil One from the PS One because like the teeth look like piano keys. I can't get over it. Like in the re in the, in the new image, his teeth are massive. It used to be more gum than teeth, and now it's more teeth than gum <laughs> in the pictures that are showing. And it's so, it's really putting me off. Bibby um, trained to be a dentist for many years, by the way. So this is the <laughs> uh, the teeth to gum ratio absolutely pisses him off because it says it says major things about your dental hygiene. So there you go. Uh, nerd says Lincoln Hood when Bibby uh, <laughs> went through the S D A I S like like that. It wasn't even like rehearsed. It just went straight through what it is. Oh, I need to. I do need to get a life to be perfectly honest. But <laughs> as long as I've got a life of Resident Evil in it, I am sound. <laughs> If any 12-year-olds are playing it, they probably wouldn't know what a floppy is. Way. <laughs> that's that's that. It's, it's funny that, we're t mentioning that, one of the things in Ding 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 PUBG uh, that there is at the moment, you have to go through, and if you see like CD component or DVD components, um, you have to pick them up as you're going through the games. Uh, and it's like a community exercise. The more they get picked up, the more the community go uh, to push the total towards like receiving rewards. Anyway, um, it's funny how many youngsters youngsters this is me being proper old by the way uh don't know what a cd or a dvd is because I, I was watching someone stream and it was like what well, but why would you be finding parts of dvds and it's like that, that that used to be the form of sharing data getting information getting photos and files and stuff and it was just like really and it's like what how did you not know that did not just use usbs usbs haven't been around forever i mean let me blow your mind let me show you what a cassette is <laughs> yeah what? tape it had wheels in it <laughs> what I see what yeah, you mean. I just sent you a picture of Nemesis uh, on uh, Discord, just just for a reference of what he's meant to look like, rather than piano teeth. I think that's what I'm going to call him from now on. Uh, do la, 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 la. trying to figure out the best way to open this now. Uh, that one. Uh, that one. Uh, that one. Well, before then, I think we've got Project Resistance uh, coming out anyway. Um, which is meant to be... I haven't seen much from it because I think it's NDA'd at the moment. I've only seen what the community... Um, which Cat from uh, the Capcom Community Manager has been sharing, um, which isn't a lot, obviously, because it's not out yet. <laughs> so people who have been playing on the Xbox uh, in the beta period have been able to play, but it looks like a Resident Evil Outbreak clone. 
Um, so hopefully we'll be able to see that at some point on the PS4. Just want to uh, point out for those of you watching video services, that is the picture that Bibby sent through of Nemesis. That isn't Bibby. I know the similarities. <laughs> Ooh, banter, banter, banter. Uh, but yeah, there we go. Uh, de, de. Bring him back. Bring the bib back. So, uh, yes, yeah, so obviously we, we get no information on when Resident Evil 3 is coming out. We don't have any information. All we have at this point in time is the cover artwork that was released uh, onto the PlayStation Network and scraped from there. But, obviously, previous um, nods are towards a 2020 release, which, obviously, as Bibbs has mentioned, would, would be very possible. The fact that the game has essentially had Raccoon City modelled already in the Resident Evil 2 remake, uh, which is hugely upscaling on what's happened previously all they can do is copy and paste a lot of those textures all they need to do is copy and paste a lot of those textures and they've got a very very big start to move on from so mm -hmm. 2020 definitely uh definitely possible they've got all of the script written out they've got all of the storyline they don't have to do any uh, anything with that obviously they can update and tweak it as they go but yeah i i think i think we're definitely going to be nailed on with that i mean the rumors are saying it it has to be has to be i mean if it isn't oh well maybe, maybe he has to wait longer and we have to wait longer to watch him shit himself on the ice cream upload yeah. is that the Cheers liquor oh, 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 oh. <laughs> and if, if you don't know what that means then check out any of our previous broadcasts uh from the from the last few months uh, and you will see the intro to the show has been saying that at about 30 seconds left on the countdown so there you go um uh I see what you mean. He did teeth seem sharper in the original than the cover out, but you know, this is just cover out. The game model might be different. Uh, Bibi, before he put his makeup on. Lol. <laughs> if, if you could remake any game, what would it be? Ooh. Well, the two uh, the two that have been remade now. So, yeah. Uh, the first one got remade years and years and years and years. I think it's been remade more than any of them. Um, not clones like Resident Evil 4, because that's been ported onto fridges and stuff like that. Um Speaking about fridges, ta-da! Anyway, um, <laughs> I actually don't know. What other game would I want to see remastered? I know. I, I actually mentioned it in the chat yesterday. Metal Gear Solid 3 Snake Eater. I'd love to see that remade with full-on sexy HD textures. That's that's one of the things. Let me see if I can uh, load it up on a browser page whilst I'm here. Res, not Resident Evil. Uh, Metal Gear Solid Peace Walker HD. Uh... It was, it was quite annoying in terms of um, one thing that the Metal Gear Solid community has shouted out for for quite a while is um, seeing Metal Gear Solid 3 Snake Eater redone, full-on HD, sexy textures, uh, not just uh, PS2 sort of polygons, like absolutely beasting it out. And then... When some images got circulated uh, a couple of years back where it was all fully HD textured, everyone absolutely lost their mind. But it turns out it was just for a, a video for the uh, Metal Gear Solid 3 Snakey Apache slot machine, uh, pachinko machine. And just seeing that and seeing how much positivity there was around the hype and the assets, uh, I, I'd absolutely see that. There we go. Let me let me open this full screen. Uh, so uh, this is the sort of tech that we were looking at for uh, Metal Gear Solid. Uh, that, so obviously decent at the time, and it still kind of holds up pretty well compared to some of the uh, the f player faces. Obviously, there's another one. That, that was Naked Snake Metal Gear Solid 3. Uh, but then uh, when you see like this sort of asset, uh, and then these sort of assets for characters, if you're thinking, oh, okay, it's still very, very true to the original, but I would love to see that um a level of detail in a metal gear solid 3 game I, it's, it's absolutely by a long way my favorite metal gear solid game so yeah metal gear solid 3 snakey a full full 4k 8k 27k whatever give me all the k's special k i don't mind i, 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 I love some of that um but yeah that's what i'll go for uh, i'm Three off the top of my head but the probably ones that i think we've mentioned previously anyway dino christ um, Dino Crisis, Legacy of Kane, Soul Reaver, and Silent Hill. They're probably the three games that I'd say, but I'm sure there's a, a ton more. I mean, a Vice City remake would be a sensational oh. using GTA Vice City, uh, using the GTA 5 engine. That'd be badass. Imagine. Oh. <laughs> but it'd be an absolute pain in the ass to try and get all them um, licenses for the songs and the radio stations and stuff like that again. So. 
in GTA games, the the soundtrack makes the game. I, I, I'd probably say it's like 40% of the game, the soundtrack, the amount of driving that you do, uh, regardless of how good the storyline is and things that are surrounding it. You want to be in that Vice City world with the 80s music and things like that. So if oh, they can try yeah. and get all of that, that'll be great. Um, but yeah, that'll be awesome. Emotion 98.3 FM. More mood swings than your pregnant wife. <laughs> God damn it, yeah. It was just it was like the other day when I was driving home and uh I, I was listening to one of my like old playlists and the shooters Grand Theft Auto theme came on on the way Chief, home. Chief Grand like, Theft Auto. Yeah. Whack that up to 25, we are flying down the M6. Uh, just when you start and you see danga 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 Good, good shot, kid. You got him. Dagger, 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 dagger. Oh, it's like badass. If you don't know what that is, then don't even Google it because we've just absolutely 100% nailed it on the head there. You, you, it sounds exactly the same. So, well, you're probably never going to be able to wear this because it's going to be copyright claimed. That's how good it was. Yeah, yeah. So, so I'll try to do it again. Yeah, you're welcome. Nailed it. Absolutely. Nailed it. <laughs> and uh, that failed, Graham, because they don't mute you on the fly when you're live. So, fuck! Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, uh, first came out in 1998, and it's a, a great stealth game, talking about Thief Trilogy. Ah, you've mentioned Thief before a few times, Link, so... You streamed it as well. Yeah. Um, seen someone doing Goldeneye at the moment, as in, like, Goldeneye Remake? Or, well, I mean, the one thing I will say about Goldeneye is I absolutely loved that game, obviously doing all the stuff like using our job, sitting in the, uh, the vents, and then kind of like going, pop, pop, and back in again, like, proper snaky play. But... I went back and played it probably in the last couple of years. I can't remember where. I think it was at my mate Carl's house. Um, and oh, was it was in the office. Either way, the maps are so, so small. It's kind of like... Um, like if you're playing Call of Duty, it's like having shipment but a little bit bigger. Uh, and because like, the rose-tinted glasses of it is, is incredible. Because I remember... Like running around these maps, thinking, "Oh, they're so huge; they could be anywhere." And it's kind of like being stood in this room, and, and then someone just kind of like being there. <laughs> it's like, "Oh, there, mm -hmm. there we go! Oh, there we go!" Uh, well, I, I'm just going to mention that I did actually play it when we was at Arcade Club the other day because uh, they had an N64 set up with that and Smash. Uh, I think it was Smash. I didn't. It, it was just sort of whatever cartridge on the side. Um, but yeah, it's it's a terrible game. Like, don't go back and play it. That, and I think we mentioned the getaway as well when I went back and played that. Just don't play any of them two games. Keep the nostalgia live in your head because you, you're going to ruin it otherwise. It does not hold up well. Uh, <clears throat> Golden I 25. Double seven Golden I 25. Uh... Lincoln Hood says, uh, I hope uh, I had hope as they renewed the copyright last year, but who knows? Ah, he's talking about Bully. Uh, we actually covered this on The Scoop about a month and a half ago. Yeah. Um, uh, saying that it's now dead in the water, unfortunately. Um, I can't remember the reason why. Uh, they, did, they did acquire it. Um, let me just see if I could try and get that quickly. But we did cover it saying that it is now finally dead in the water. Bully 2, dead. Just want to uh, jump into this. I've just searched for what uh, Craig was talking about in the chat. Check out uh, 007 Gold 925 on Twitter. And this actually looks pretty good. So this is their feed. Um, and they've got some images there. So D17. Final update. Made keyboards, desk props, and a couple of new monitor screens. There's always more that could be done, but it's time to move on. The rest of the game needs to be made. I hope you enjoyed this thread. Maybe we can do it again for a different level. This is sick. Uh... Bam, bam, bam. Okay, that that is pretty good. That is pretty good. So this is the remake of um, James Bond Goldeneye 00725. Obviously, an unofficial fan project, uh, but I love seeing I love seeing someone put their own time and creativity into making stuff mm -hmm. like that. Because oh, man, that's great. Even just seeing Boris in the film standing up and going, "I am invincible!" in this room, uh, through to actually running through it on on. Seven. There's quite uh, um, Goldeneye. There's quite a few memories there, and that's this, that film's actually where my love of the Amiga Seamaster came from. Because the marketing campaign for that uh, shows Pierce Brosnan wearing an Amiga Seamaster watch. Uh, so yeah, that film inspired my love of the Amiga Seamaster watch. So there you go. Um, didn't one of the GTA's in-game radio ads have a jingle saying something like, "The men, f uh, f the men folk find their women scary because they're 
uh, small and hairy. Yeah, they, they used to have pretty much everything, like um, the glory hole where strangers become friends. Uh, it was like some sort of like adult <laughs> meeting space kind of thing. I love it. I love the uh, GTAs. Uh, uh, I've wow, just checked the bully awesome. finger. Basically, it just fizzled out. Uh, the Rockstar don't have the time to be able to put into it. Ah, boo. But yeah, I've never played Bully, so we we spoke about it um, for a for a good chunk of time actually. Like Baby says, a, 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 about a month or so ago. Um, never played Bully, so I would I'd be open to. Uh, a remake of that just so that I can actually play through it. But anyway, let's mm. move on. Uh, so obviously there was investigate. What was that? Can you hear that? No, because because I'm in the makeshift uh, little scoop area, uh, which is <laughs> for all intents and purposes next to the toilet. <laughs> <laughs> so someone's using the hand dryer, which to be fair you can hear while we're upstairs in the office uh, down here. It just sounds like a jet engine. It sounds like a PS4 Pro or your PS4 Pro. Um, yeah. <laughs> um, so yes, from 2K potentially looking at doing bully and cancelling any plans for that into something else that's been cancelled, and this one's kind of close to home for Bibi. <laughs> uh, as we oh, 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 as we bring it on full screen, and there we go. Uh, Valve cancelling orders for four pound Steam controllers after it mistakenly sells too many. Blames technical issue during the Steam sale. This was written by Matt Wales uh, for Eurogamer. This was written on, uh, updated on the 3rd of December 2019, which just happens to be my birthday. Yes, that was yesterday, but feel free to send in <laughs> love, donations, congrats, all of the things. Uh, Valve is cancelling orders for its heavily discounted Steam controllers after it inadvertently sold too many during this year's Steam Autumn sale. Last week, as the sale got underway, eagle-eyed bargain hunters spotted that Valve had slashed the cost of its wonderfully uh, idiosyncratic Steam controller by a whopping 90%, lowering its usual 39.99 price right down to a paltry four pounds, although delivery uh, remained uh, not insubstantial, seven pounds, 40. And thank you very much to Link for dropping the uh, bits there. Birthday bits! Cheers, Link. You're, you're a lovely, lovely man. Anyway, uh, back to the article. A notice on the controller Steam page warned that only a limited quantity remained, which The Verge learned was the result of Valve's decision to cease production of the device. Controllers initially appeared to sell out rapidly, but Steam intermittently enabled new purchases, giving the impression that Valve might be regulating stock throughout its sale. Over the weekend, however, some seemingly successful purchases, including myself, and Bip, uh, awoke to discover a refund notification email sitting in their inboxes. Following some confusion online as to why refunds were being triggered given the lack of clarification uh, like lack of clarification on the initial invoice, Valve dispatched a follow-up email explaining more. Due to a technical issue during our recent sale, the company wrote, we mistakenly took more orders for the same control, uh, controller than we were able to fulfil, including yours. It also reconfirmed that currently, at least, it had no plans to produce more of this product and would be unable to complete certain orders, leading to refunds being given. We sincerely apologise for the confusion and inconvenience, Valve's message concluded. Customers that haven't been sent a cancellation email should, presumably, still be on track to receive their Steam controllers, although Valve previously noted that it expected longer than usual delivery times on the device due to high demand. Fuming. Even more so that uh, Alistair has had his... Uh, it dropped out a little bit then. Did you say Alistair's had his? Hello? Hello, can you hear me? Oh, there we go. Yeah. Uh, I was saying uh, I'm fuming that mine got cancelled because I know that Alistair has attempted to be delivered at his house. Unlucky. <laughs> Lull in the chat yeah. says Link. <laughs> uh, <laughs> but I, uh, I want, I've, but I just will, wasn't willing to pay £40 for a control I've never held before and it could be a bag of shit. Uh, but £4 was an absolute steal. Uh, yeah. But I just never got the opportunity to play it, unfortunately. Yeah, £4 is the sort of... That's, that's kind of... That's the lower. That's like half the price range that you'd expect to pay for, like the Duff controller that your mate uses when he comes around when you're playing SNES games, kind of thing. And the Mad Cats, the old of, Mad Cats. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so yeah, four quid is ridiculous. Obviously, seven pound forty for delivery and stuff, but but still, for for the quality of that kind of product, having the uh, the touchpad, trackpad kind of thing, um, for four quid, definitely, definitely good. I mean. 
The only thing I would say is you will probably see a few more going for sale on on eBay's Gumtrees and Facebook Marketplaces and things like that. But yeah, but yeah, you're never going to get it for four quid. You might get fifteen quid, which isn't too far away from the uh, eleven pound forty that would have cost to get one delivered brand new from from Barb directly. So, yes, sorry, babe, you ain't getting no controller. <laughs> But but you are getting Resident Evil Three, so. so oh, yeah. every cloud. Uh, you're not getting every cloud. Wait, let's, let's, let's. Oh my God, this is ridiculous. I want to open up the next article for you here on the scoop. Uh, this is a Polygon article, but my God, the advertisement space is chupid. Okay, if this is if this is your website, and you advertise like this, uh, then that is ridiculous. All of the website! And then, oh yeah, actually, the actual stuff that you want to see is down at the bottom. Thankfully, it does move when I scroll, so that's okay. But there we go, into our next piece of news. This is written by Austin Goslin from Polygon. It says, Halo Reach PC lets players turn off anti-cheat to make modding easier. Don't worry, you can't play matchmaking games if anti-cheat is turned off. Uh, so Halo Reach launched on PC for the first time on Graham's birthday, December the 3rd, as part of Halo The Master Chief Collection. While the game is mostly the same as its console counterpart, developer 343 Industries has already confirmed that it would support community mods in the PC version of the game. As a first sign of that support, the release features an easy way to turn off Halo Reach's anti-cheat. While this may sound dangerous... What, what the hell? Okay, my PC has just flashed up to tell me... Hey Graham, you have no devi uh, no viruses. This is good. <laughs> Such a <laughs> thanks, mate. Uh, so anyway, uh, while this may sound dangerous for players that want to end the joy uh, enjoy the game's standard multiplayer, it actually isn't. This is a creative solution that will allow players to use mods and play modded maps in custom matches and campaign mode. But to help keep things competitive, players who don't have the game's anti-cheat software active won't be able to play match-made game modes. Uh, and there's an image there that shows to uh, play Halo MCC with anti-cheat disabled. Um, so for players launching the Master Chief Collection on Steam, you'll see a pop-up that asks if you'd like to run the game with or without anti-cheat. For players using the Xbox app, you'll have two separate programs you can launch. One called Halo The Master Chief Collection and one called Halo MCC Anti-Cheat Disabled. This news comes as a welcome addition to longtime Halo PC fans who have always known modding as part of the game. Halo Combat Evolved mod has opened at new sections of familiar maps such as cliffs high above Blood Gulch and modded weapons to make the machine gun rocket launchers or sniper rifles that fired like tanks. Modding eventually became so popular in the PC community that the developer originally ported Halo Combat Evolved to the platform. Gearbox Software, yes, the Borderlands developer, released a new multiplayer-only version of the game called Halo Custom Edition that was essentially an expansion designed to be a playground for modders. While only uh, basic mods were possible in Combat Evolved, Custom Edition, uh, uh, Custom Edition let players import huge numbers of new assets. In Custom Edition, modders recreated Call of Duty levels, made entirely new maps and game modes, and even created fully pilotable longsword spaceships for players to fly. Most of the mods that players created for Halo Custom Edition were made using the Halo Editing Kit, a piece of software Gearbox developed specifically to make map creation easier for modders. 343 Industries has said that it's also working on custom modern tools for Halo Reach creators that will launch shortly after the game. That's big news. That, that is actually pretty, pretty, pretty big news. One thing that uh, particularly PC gaming, obviously, well, exclusively PC gaming, really, um, it... Uh, modding i forgot my train of thought there, but what i was trying to say was modding is huge in terms of prolonging a game's shelf life and obviously when you've got a game that has already had quite a long shelf life in in the greater uh sphere in terms of like halo reach being out quite a while uh the fact that that's just landing on pc obviously it will it'll have kind of a, a much shorter tail lifespan everyone that has played it already will think okay well, the majority of people won't go to PC to play it again. Some PC players that have never played it will play it again. Some Halo fans will play it again. Um, but it'll be kind of like a flash in a pan and gone. But adding things like modding just just changes the game there. Um, hmm. And and we've seen games that that allow modding uh, within them make a game last forever. I mean, it just keeps on finding a new vein of... Uh, a new lease of life. Uh, and then, obviously, as we've seen with... with PUBG. It leads to to new games. So so uh, yeah, sure, I just wanted to uh, tangent into PUBG there. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Um, are you, are you going to mod yours, babe? 
Uh, well, it kind of brings us nicely onto uh, my experience with playing Halo last night because, I, again, happy Halo Day yesterday for anyone that had partaken in playing that game when it got released, like your boy. Um, but yeah, it's it's really, really good. It's tough. It's a hell of a lot tougher than I remember it being. Um, I completely forgot that when you get shot, you unscope out of your gun, which is annoying. That'd do my nutting. Yeah, so, well, I mean, it could be, I, I'm I'm fairly certain that was what, what was happening. Um, so every time I was trying to take a shot, if someone shot me, I'd unscope. Uh, so then I just have to try and run off kind of thing. But uh, yeah, it's a hell of a lot harder than I remember it being. Um, but yeah, it's good. Um, I think I'm level five now. I only played it for a couple of hours because then City came on. So I decided to play Destiny instead because I can play a campaign on that and I don't have to worry about dying uh, many, 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 many times. Um, but yeah, it's a good game. I'm re I'm really enjoying it. I think there's going to be a lot of people that are going to be picking it up. And again, if anyone in the ICU community wants to join up and play some of these custom maps that you can play uh, and mod, that'd be great. I'm definitely up for that. Um, but I do like the fact that you can mod the maps to be able to um, create game modes or create matchups um, that you typically won't be able to see. How about modding the map so, online so that? Um... If you get shot while you're ADSing, you can still ADS. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I was, I was watching the doc play it for a very brief amount of time yesterday, and you could tell how rusty some people are in that game, with how uh, with how it plays. And a game has come a long way since back, way back then. Um, but yeah, it's definitely worth picking up, especially for seven pound. There's nothing. <sighs> Um, just thirty pound for seven games. That package is a steal, says Link in the chat. Five fifty nine on Xbox. Getting that, says Next Gen Renegade. Uh, Dad Bantz says only human jelly. I I can't remember what I said. <laughs> it's all Dad Bantz. That's that's the point. There was no wrong with our third party SNES controller. We used to fight over who got to use it first. Did we? I can't remember that one. Uh, I always used to love the standard SNES controllers. They were just too smooth. When I, whenever we got like third party ones, they were always like. The edges of the buttons just weren't smooth. They were too jagged. So trying to flip, particularly if you're doing like anything that required button bashing between, say, whatever X and Circle button were blue and I don't know, whatever they are now. I can't remember. But flicking between the buttons, it would just like rag the the life out of your fingers. And um, I would have played them all. Uh, going back to Halo, this is. Uh, but I had an annoying friend in high school who was a major fanboy and would never shut up about the series, which kind of turned me off for a while. But I'm gonna pick this up and play the ones I missed. Says Link. Uh, yeah, I see. I never had that. I, I just when it came to Halo, I, I did ish. I had two mates that loved playing Halo online, um, or just doing death matches against each other. Uh, I do have they still. I still have them. I've not had two mates. Not like I lost them or anything. Um, uh, but I remember like having drunk nights playing PES Four, PES Five, or whatever Call of Duty is. I remember them going, let's not stick on the Xbox and play some Halo. I was like, yeah, yeah, nice. So I loaded up Halo Xbox 360, and I've mentioned it before on, on the scoop. The fact that I'd gone from, like, modern warfare, boots on the ground, dirty sand, and, and real-world things to seeing fluorescent green grass guys in purple suits jumping up and down. It just... And these guys have been so buzzing for it, and it was just like, oh, it's not for me, Jeff. That's It's not for me. So, yeah, my mate Dan and Gaz... Love playing Halo, but yeah, it just it was lost on me. I played a couple of games. I mean, smashed them naturally. <laughs> Didn't really got got absolutely uh, potatoed, but yeah, it, uh, it's not for me then. For more, I'll come back to because of the in between arrows. Ah, yeah, yeah. Although that still did kind of like break the crap out of your fingers. What Dave was talking about there is obviously on on, on a SNES controller, you get like your D pad, which is usually just across. We had like one that almost had uh, kind of like the Xbox pad. Uh, it was like more like a disc, so it had your uh, raised cross, but then between the raised bits, it had like obviously the other four arrows. So it's kind of like an eight-directional controller, which was useful for when you're doing like uh, Mortal Kombat moves where you need to slide from down diagonally up to forward. It, it just kind of yeah, for 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 slow children as we were, it helped very much. Mm. Uh, well, I, I will be playing. I will be playing through this on. Um on stream anyway and uh, not just the multiplayer part i'm going to play through the campaign again because this is one of the old this and uh, halo 4 are the two halo games that i've never completed so i'll look forward to playing through. Ooh. Now, my mate had a third snares pad that had turbo switch on it it was fun when playing street fighter when you're going hadouken 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 <laughs> 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 uh, 
Uh, I loved Halo 2 growing up. My first Halo game, says Link. Oh, well, I've not played any, so I will I will make sure I tune into Bib doing his playthrough live on twitch.tv forward slash. I scream up words. Um, but move forward. Move forward. Moving forward. I'm clearly... Yeah. Uh, move forward. Move forward. Uh, clearly uh, out of sorts. So my birthday, dude. I mentioned it was my birthday yesterday. It's my birthday yesterday, by the way. Just saying, just saying. Uh, scorpions come here. And Reptile's Energy Ball. It was best ball. Yeah, 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 yeah. Um, so let's jump into a little bit of news. And I think this is only here. I mean, it is news. Uh, but I think it's only here so that Bib can get me to say the word PUBG again because he's got some weird addiction to me saying PUBG. I don't. I only say it to keep him happy. Uh, but but let's let's progress. So this is from Stephanie uh, Stephanie Nunnally at VG twenty four seven. So PUBG Wolfenstein ding 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 ding, ding. Uh, Wolfenstein the Old Blood and F one twenty nineteen have been added to the PlayStation Now lineup. So Sony has had a, uh, has added even three new titles to the PlayStation Now service. The North American and European ends of the PlayStation Now service have three new titles available to subscribers. Both regions can now play PUBG Wolfenstein The Old Blood and Formula One 2019 through March 3rd. If you haven't played them already, you have until January 2nd to try God of War, Grand Theft Auto V, Uncharted 4 and Infamous Second Son. Alongside the additional games, if you haven't given the service a go, PS Now has a seven-day free trial. Uh, and they have a little video. I'm going to hit that and hit mute. It's still muted, so that's good. I'll leave that on screen as we chat. See, my I, I mean, I love any addition, uh, additions like that, actually. Is, is this the old PUBG trailer? Uh, oh, no, this looks pretty pretty new. That's I like it when, when you get trailers like this. PlayStation did a, a PUBG sort of um trailer when the when the game first launched on playstation about a year or so after get hitting the xbox mm. or whatever they did their own sort of like irl trailer kind of like this and it was cool but um yeah interesting like like the actual article says pubg oh there we go now never mind i missed that word there i thought it said both regions can now play wolf and the old blood formula i did i thought it was like it mentions it there but it does mention it there i completely missed it <laughs> um but yeah, my, my issue with this, I mean, I think that's good. I do think it's good, the fact that you've got a chance to try uh, PUBG, Wolfenstein, and Formula 1. I mean, I'm, I'm, I'm not going to play Formula 1, even though it does look amazing. I've, pl I've played it before, um, and it's clearly not for me. Uh, I'm not good enough at playing those racing games. So, yeah, I will keep away from it, because I played it on stream. Uh, we did uh, an hour with... Uh, an hour with. Oh, my God! My Slack is just firing Struggling. notifications. No, I've, I've, it's because I'm trying to kill my notifications on Slack. It just keeps firing them through into my ear, so I've muted them again. But there we go. Hopefully, <laughs> I'm covered. There we go. Hopefully, Slack will stop going. Shrip up, up, shrip up, up, shrip up, up. Um, so, yes, uh, I'm, I'm not going to play Formula One. I, I'm probably not going to play Wolfenstein. Um, obviously, PUBG I've got already. So, But it's, it's nice for those people that would play it. But my issue with it is things like that. If you haven't played them already, you've got until January the second, uh, second to try God of War, Grand Theft Auto V, Uncharted 4, and Infamous Second Son. Amazing games, all of those. GTA V, amazing. Uncharted 4, phenomenal experience. Infamous Second Son, launched out for PS4, really enjoyed it all the way through it. Um, God of War, obviously, kind of speaks for itself. Game of the Year. Mm. Um, but I don't like the fact that, that they appear and then disappear. So you've got until January 2nd to try them. Whereas... I don't believe that's the case with Xbox Game Pass, isn't it? Is it a case of you have it and then it's kind of there forever? I'm... I don't think so. I'm sure the games come and go on that as well. Maybe not as frequently as they are on PlayStation Plus because it seems to be that you only get to play them for like a month or so before they, before they actually disappear, especially in massive games like PUBG. Um, so we'll see how long that was because it was, don't forget, a Microsoft exclusive for the longest time. Um, so we'll see how, how long this goes on the PlayStation um PlayStation Plus. Do I think it's gonna entice people to come and play it? Probably not. Um it's not gonna make me go and pay uh, eight pounds to be able to play it. I do want PlayStation Plus. Uh we are losing Bibby. Um, he's turning into Fallout Oblivion. Fallout Oblivion. <laughs> Fall Oblivion. <laughs> it looks like Fallout yep, there we go. and Oblivion as one word. Fall Oblivion. <laughs> Fall Oblivion. Uh, but yeah, um there's there's loads of games on there that I do eventually want to pick up and play again so we'll see um but will this pick it will this entice other people probably not i don't think it's as uh playstation plus don't do enough marketing around what they're offering people unlike the what uh, microsoft do with their game pass stuff well i think that kind of says it all you said playstation plus don't do enough marketing like 
uh, Xbox Game Pass do. When they're two different things. That's like Xbox Live and PlayStation Plus and then PlayStation Now and Xbox Game Pass. And I believe that's the thing as well. The Xbox Live and the Xbox Game Pass are two different mm-hmm. two different things. You, you understand. One's Live and one's the Game Pass. But then you've got Plus and Now. Uh, the fact that it's one word that is non-descriptive, um, I think that is part of the brand positioning for me. Is 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 plus now? Is now plus? I mean, I'm I'm probably being a bit too simplifying there in the fact that a lot of people will still get Xbox Game Pass and Xbox Live mixed up. Particularly mums and dads walking into a store at Christmas and they'll come home and go, "You can play the games online now." There you go. And it's like I've just got me three months of a Game Pass. That that means nothing to me. I need I need the live. God damn it. Um, yeah. So, but that but that's why they invented the uh, ultimate yeah. Xbox uh, uh, Ultimate because that's everything in it. That's you. You can play it on PC, Xbox Live subscription, all rolled into one. Yeah, but it, it's that's beyond the um, the thing. I mean, the play, the PlayStation Now and PlayStation Plus. The fact that it's two ambiguous words. Um, yeah. PlayStation PlayStation Plus doesn't really mean anything. PlayStation Now doesn't really mean anything. I mean, I've got a PlayStation and it's it's here now. So does that mean I qualify? <laughs> I don't know what it means. Uh, whereas Xbox Live, yes, still ambiguous, um, but you can can kind of read into it but then the xbox game pass that's a bit more descriptive uh so yeah i think that brand positioning plus the fact that um it's almost kind of like ps plus in in the in the essence that when when you've had e3 uh and they've just done the big announcement of a new game like the last of us 2 is a great example the very next month they add the last of us to ps plus and everyone's like oh my god ps plus is is big now it's up in its game and then yeah. then Next month you'll get like, uh, I don't know, Spreadsheet Academy Three or something like that, and it's like, well, get the fuck about that. Oh, it's only on the Vita as well. Great, wonderful, or whatever. Um, so, and this kind of smacks of that as well. PS Now service. You've gone from having God of War, GTA Five, Uncharted Four, Infamous Second Son, to having PUBG, yay! But then going Wolfenstein uh, and Formula One. It's just like. Yeah, it's 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 not hitting with the same p- impact. Whereas Xbox Game Pass, it probably isn't, but it f- seems like it's just hitting punch after yeah. punch, like haymaker after haymaker after haymaker. So, if they want to go to a, a um, an open ended continued service format like that for PlayStation, then I think Sony definitely need to investigate and take a look at the competition and see how it's happening because PlayStation now is just a bit. Just a bit weak in that. Robo baby, uh, I, love, I love Spreadsheet Academy Three. Well, there you go. It's it's really it's a really good game. <laughs> it's not. It's not. It's not. Um, there was an amazing one in Reach where the Covenant are having a disco party. That's it's been so long that I don't remember what we were talking about there. Uh, a little, little bit more info, Link. I'm, I'm I'm I think I think he's talking about Halo Reach. Yeah, uh, obviously mentions Reach there, but amazing one. What mod? Was it the mod? Oh, Easter eggs. Ah, okay. Uh, I don't know what the Covenant is either, so that's probably why it was all kind of lost on me. If I'd, if I'd have had any knowledge of Halo, then it might have might have been something I could have worked through. Um, but but yes, 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 yes. Would would you play? Uh, would you pay for PlayStation now um, for God of War, GTA Five, Uncharted Four, and Infamous, babe? If I'd never played them before, yes, of course. Would you pay for PlayStation now? If you've never played them before, for PUBG, Wolfenstein, The Old Blood, and Formula One 2019. No, because I think Formula One's 19. I don't know if I even know if that's the newest one. Uh, but there's been a new there's been a new Wolfenstein since that, and PUBG is kind of on the decline. Um, so again, probably not. Yeah, exactly. I mean, whilst the game gets better, as with anything, it's it's a continued service game that's two years old now, so the user base is dropping off. So even me who's sat in a room that has a shelf full of PUBG stuff just there and bits on the wall up there, I would say that that is a bad offer. Uh, so PlayStation Now, like coming up to Christmas, it's just not the greatest. It's not the greatest Christmas selling like spiel. Yeah, yeah, PUBG, Wolfenstein and Formula <laughs> One. Yeah, uh, yeah they, they need to, I mean, starting with PUBG, they clearly, clearly know that that's the only one. I mean, PUBG... 
talking about it console wise is dropping off and it's obviously the user base has dropped off on pc as any any game would if it's two years old but it's still huge and still drives um column inches online minutes sales all the rest which is why playstation have headlined with that that pan video there but um yeah it's, it just doesn't have the same gravitas for console players as gta 5 uncharted 4 god of war and infamous so, yeah so yeah playstation now i mean i was never going to get it anyway um because i have all of those games and still <laughs> haven't played them yet so i was never going to get it but for me looking at it for if i was to try it, it like let's say christmas it's not uncommon to buy someone a psn voucher or to buy someone an xbox live voucher or to buy maybe now oh, do you know what? i've got your three months xbox game pass for christmas or something like that. parents or families or relatives might do that but i wouldn't i'd, I'd be more happy to buy someone an xbox game pass voucher than i would be a playstation now voucher and i'm not a particular fanboy for either i am just more biased yeah. towards playstation because that's where all of my gaming has always been and playstation and me share the same birthday just just say it just say it. <laughs> actual bros <laughs> Um, so yeah, I would I would be more inclined to play on PlayStation, but I would be more inclined to 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 recommend the Xbox Game Pass over PlayStation now. And and they just they don't seem to be getting how how it works uh, unless they're mm. happy enough with it. I mean, one thing that Link does say depends on how it's affecting game sales for Xbox. I wonder if they're taking a hit on every new release game that lands on Game Pass. That's that's a huge point because Gears Five uh, released uh, and hit Game Pass at the exact same time. PUBG, obviously, it's hitting PlayStation now. When that had its big announcement at E3 a couple of years ago for the for the new uh, little jungle map, which is obviously not new anymore, that went straight onto Game Pass the very same day as the announcement at, at E3. Um, but I believe, and I may be wrong, but I, I, I believe I've heard it covered a few times that that it's it's the knock on sales. So when you have more people playing a game, they've, they've found that people playing um, PUBG because of the Game Pass will then start... That leads to a huge uptick in in-game sales. Uh, so the developers and stuff are still getting the money through it that way. Um, or people playing a Gears might then start to lead to more people... I mean, it's, it's a bad example because I know Gears 4 is on the Game Pass, but if you play Gears 5, a lot of people then go, actually, I want to play Gears 4. Um, and then three, and then buying like the full collections kind of thing. So having mm -hmm. games on Game Pass are leading. I know that it definitely is having a significant impact in getting more people playing. And purely because if more people are playing your game, more people are talking about your game, more people will then go out and buy stuff. And and having things like that is leading to more sales of... Um, uh, oh, Bibby's TV is checking out behind him. Uh, but having things like that is leading more to, uh, to more sales of Game Passes as well. So if Bibby's talking about how good the Game Pass is, to me, because he's been playing... Uh, God of War, that's uh, not God of War, uh, Gears of War, that's possibly going to make me go out and buy Gears of War. Uh, or it could possibly make me go out and buy the Games Pass, which then, yeah. So so the, I, I don't have the figures. <clears throat> I have heard it and I've read, read articles saying that word of mouth is, leaving, is leading to more game sales and is leading to more uh, Games Pass sales. So I believe it's doing well. And the fact that Xbox are still front and centre in it everywhere makes me believe it's it's doing well and and the, the general fact of the matter is that somebody that signs up to um xbox game pass that is a casual gamer quite often you will find gamers that buy a game two games a year and that's it um obviously that sounds kind of foreign to quite a lot of us we're all in here watching this podcast because we're all fans of games so for us, two games a year is probably... What? Okay, that mate. Uh, I've got yeah. more games that I've never played that I've purchased than, than, than just two a year. Uh, but, yeah, there, there are quite a lot of people that will happily do that. And if you think you're spending, um, let's say, best part of £10 a month, obviously, it's not that high. Uh, but £10 a month times 12 months, £120, so say £100-ish a year, um, that you're throwing into Xbox Game Pass. But you usually only buy two games per year. Um you, you spend about 80 quid then so you still if you if you subscribe to the game pass and then kind of just think oh forget it i'm i'm just i'm, I'm working i'm busy i'm sweating the kids i'm doing the car I'm, I'm going to football i'm doing whatever you've got in life 
and you and you don't cancel your game pass and you still have it for a full year you're still 20 quid up in the ecosystem there so i mean obviously that's just one hypothetical thing uh, there's a lot of people that will spend a thousand pounds on games but then only spend 100 quid a year so it does it does balance out but i imagine with the amount of placement uh pride of place it gets on xbox's market in the moment it has to be doing doing the numbers for microsoft or or i wouldn't be sat here trying to make up fictional stories about a guy that spends a hundred pound but only plays two games two, a year. i've got two comments so you can do have you one think that they <laughs> do you think that microsoft are relying on people to go and buy their consoles and sign up to games pass just as a service rather than buying the actual games from them i i was actually going to go and buy an xbox one s just to be able to use the game pass with no intention of buying any other game from them uh Sorry, do, do I believe that Xbox is using the Game Pass as a way to uh, essentially sell games without selling games? Yeah, so they just sell a console for whatever it was in Black Friday, cheapest 99 usually of 129 uh, to buy the console during Black Friday. So I would then, therefore, I'll go and spend £129 and then a year subscription of £40, £60 that they didn't have initially. Uh, just quickly, gotta run, catch you guys, later uh, see you Linky, thank you very much for dropping in see you thank later, you very for the birthday bits as well, much love, much love um, yes, I believe so um, I think that the fact that there is a, an Xbox less than £100 um, and there is an Xbox that is digital only there is no disc drive in it, and the fact that there is a service like Games Pass I believe that that um, is, is, is a better model for them. Whether that's better for the publishers and how that transitions into... Um, there's a whole conversation of... Like, you've, you've got Apple Arcade, you've got the Xbox Game Pass, mm -hmm. you've got PlayStation Now, um, and how developers then get funded through those. Um, do they just get f funded for the amount of downloads? Do they get funded by the amount of time spent playing? Do they get funded for people completing it? Because then, however they get funded through that... Um, determines how game development progresses so if, if you get paid for the amount of minutes that you spend playing a game something like PUBG is amazing because there is mm -hmm. an open end you can play that for as long as you want um, so you'll start seeing developers going okay well I want to play something that's that's repetitive repetitive play it do it do it do it over and over again so they can keep playing so I can keep getting paid whereas um, you find a game that's that's a 50 minute story that's intense that's uh, really emotionally hard hit in it's one of the best experiences you've ever had but after you've had your 50 minutes you're done developers are then going to go well i'm getting paid no here because it's, it's they're just not playing it enough mm. um so yeah the issue there for me is how they get paid but the, the, forgetting all of that coming back to the initial point do i believe that they're looking to just sell that yeah i think that's an easy way in for them if they can sell you the digital only xbox one s console uh with some games and an extra pad for 120 quid is what it came to when you bought the extra controllers and stuff um then then just get the game pass on top of that and you've got your consistent supply of games through the year i i fully believe that they're looking that as uh like their entry sort of system into into the in the games industry for the more casual end of it. Okay, you only want you don't want the X, you just want an S console, and you just want the games that that aren't necessarily all of the newest ones. There are some new ones, but you also got a, a big selection of others as well. Oh yeah, I think that's that's probably a, a safe bet. That yeah. Uh, the the second point was the fact that they have other people's games so they're uh, are they there i assume that they're paying the publishers to have their game on their marketplace do you reckon that they get a kind of kickback for any micro transactions that are in the game so say for instance you you paid uh pubg to have that game in your game pass and then when they go to play the game if they go to buy a load of cosmetics and spend 100 quid will you get like a fiver back kind of thing um i think they get that anyway i'd imagine i'd imagine that every time you buy something through the playstation marketplace say if it's coins in my club or g coin in pubg um or whatever if it costs you a fiver i don't know what the numbers are but let's say four quid of that goes to uh you're the developer you get four quid Sony will take a quid, and I am, or Xbox will take a quid, or whatever. I imagine that that it will probably. Work. I don't know what the percentages are. It could be massive. It could be a lot less than that. I don't know exactly how it runs, but because it, the transaction has happened through their system, I think they will get a cut of it. So if they can give you a game 
uh, for free, and then you just start spending money in it. They they aren't at a loss, Xbox themselves, in terms of the developer who's developed, published, made, and shipped the games or whatever. They're losing out on sales. Uh, Xbox aren't, but what Xbox are getting mm. is is the uh, the turnover of revenue from the in-game purchases. So for them, I reckon that's probably uh, it's probably easier for Xbox. Not so much for the publisher. Obviously, it depends then on. Um, obviously, if you're paying for the Game Pass, you're giving Xbox eight quid. Uh, Xbox yeah. are then giving you games that they that 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 are available on it. So the likes of the the Gears of Wars and and the PUBGs and whatever. But for you to download Gears of War and PUBG, just in the same way that listening to things on Spotify, um, Spotify artists get funded by Spotify depending on the amount of people listening to it, and so that. There is, there will be some sort of kickback from the devs that way, but yeah, I reckon the in-game purchases is just a, just an extra on top of that, which everyone kind of benefits from. Yeah, it just just so it's kind of an everybody wins uh, um, idea. So yeah, I imagine that is probably going to be something that's 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 happening. Um, but yeah, it was just it was just a thought because obviously we don't know how their business model works. We just think, Jesus Christ, that's a lot of games that you've got there. Who's getting paid where? Yeah, that, that that's that is the 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 joy and the worry of that sort of model is you pay your eight quid or whatever the cost is for Xbox Game Pass that goes to Xbox. You then download PUBG. Uh, Xbox then gives some money to the PUBG Corp. Uh, you download Gears of War. Uh, uh, Xbox then gives some money to Gears Coalition. Obviously, they own the company, but st- but still, they will still have to take some money off them um and the same thing with every other game they will get some money but it's how much and how that works if they just get it for number of downloads and installs then obviously um that can be swayed because if you are a developer and your game is coming out at the same time as gears of war 6 you know that that's going to be on the game pass so you kind of think oh well do i really want to be on the game pass at the same time of that because if i'm just based on the number of installs i'm not going to get anything because all of xbox's marketing is going to be in gears of war it's their big title so that's going to be number of installs that's going to be on all the adverts that's going to be all the posters it's going to be on all the the wraparound ads online so me as a developer i'm not going to get paid so it's not really beneficial for me but but if it's done on number of minutes played or if it's done of number of any other metrics that that sort of stuff is is where it kind of starts to get uh, interesting and that's a bit of if it's number of minutes played then you start to alienate other developers so you might have yeah experiential developers that just want you i said 50 a 50 minute playthrough you can get some games that are half an hour long and it's it's literally just meant to be that's it that's your half an hour and you've just had your experience and move on particularly indie yeah. titles so if you're an indie developer and you're thinking okay well i can get my game on xbox game pass xbox are going to do a bit of marketing for me and then um yeah i'm not going to sell the game so i'm not going to get money from sales but i'm going to get money back from the game pass you'd be thinking Whoa! but then when you yeah. want they got yeah, but your game only got thirty minutes of playthrough, so you get forty cents for that. Uh, whereas the guy next to you had um, he had ten hours this week, so he's going to get forty quid for it. And it's like, pff, yeah, but mine's only supposed to be thirty minutes. So what you're telling me in future is this kind of experience shouldn't exist in your mechanic, in your in your model. So I should make something that that promotes repetitive play, which obviously then is bad for that level of indie development, but. Well, it's, it's not just that as well. Like you say, it, it, people who play PUBG won't just be playing it for an hour. They'll be playing it for a stupid amount of hours. Indie games, again, like you said, are only like, some of them, half an hour to an hour max, about four hours. But what does that say? It just says that AAA games are the only way that are pe- they're the only games that people are going to get paid for because indie games. I, I mean, I'm I'm going to use this as a blanket statement, and I don't mean it because I probably there is going to be indie games out there that are extremely. Hideo Kojima is apparently an indie developer. Absolute bollocks. <laughs> so that's never going to be the case. But um, these he, indie games. I don't know about. He only started out with an office, three chairs, <laughs> uh, a, a phone book full of celebrities, thirty million net worth in the bank, and a dream. That's what the idea yeah. said. <laughs> But yeah, indie developers are never going to be able to try and create an 80 hour experience that's going to get people to be able to sit there and play through the entire game. That is the only way that they're ever going to get paid if that was the business model. Because there's only AAA games like uh, what's on the Game Pass now. Okay, The Outer Worlds, that's a, probably a 40 hour game. Uh, Gears of War, that's probably a 20, uh, like a 10 hour campaign. And then all the multiplayer that goes on the top of that one. So the AAA games are the ones that are going to get hours behind them rather than indie games that you can throw away after four hours, really. So we'll see how we go with that. Yeah, there was um, 
it's it's been brought up in the past. I know it particularly with Apple Arcade because you've got you do have some indie indie games and more indie developers obviously can can develop for any platform, not just consoles, and and it's just just as accessible for an indie developer, particularly to to make a a light thirty to an hour, a thirty minute to an hour long um, experience. It's just as easy for them to make that for a, a mobile as it is for a console. It's probably easier because of it's easier to get things uh, approved for a mobile as opposed to going through a console first party. Anyway. Um, uh, but that has been seen with Google. Uh, no, uh, was it what's Google's version of Apple Arcade? Um, do they do they have one? Do we, or maybe it was Apple Arcade. I, I, either way, one of the mobile ones. I remember it being discussed a few weeks back, and that's where my sort of like, ooh, that's an interesting way of looking at it. Uh, that approach came came from the fact that you look at a game like Candy Crush, where you can just play it over and 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 over, and over. but then you you play. Um, this indie game that is a is a hard hitting story that lasts thirty minutes long. If you're getting paid for screen time minutes uh, by the Apple Arcade or the Google's equivalent of it, I'm fairly sure it was Google. It could have been Apple. I remember that there was an actual um, statement saying that they realise that their model isn't perfect. It is new, and they are looking to to find ways to develop it and and to work with uh, developers and and so on. Which is always a great statement, and it is it is a new mechanic these uh be it position now be it games pass be it apple arcade or be it whatever google's version is they are all very new and we can see PlayStation now isn't the greatest service but no doubt it will improve over time but yeah just that in itself you play a game like candy crush which commands minutes uh, on screen uh, on screen uh versus a 30, 30 minute story the developer that made candy crush is going to get shit loads more from the game pass or the apple mm-hmm. arcade revenue than than Bibby's 30 minute toilet story or whatever it's called uh, so. <laughs> I'm just having a look on Google now to see if there's anything that's promoting like their equivalent of a game pass uh, and I can't see anything because I'm, I'm an Android user yeah, boy. Um, so I'm just trying to find something but it's not even promoted I'm, I'm in the game section and I can't see anything but now you say it I do remember something about it well, I don't know if it was in beta, which is why I can't see it. So only a certain amount of people can see it. There we go. If signed up for it. The Google Play Pass. That's what it's called. Google uh, Play Pass. Um, so, yeah. It's Apple Arcade uh, versus Google Play Pass. It came out at the end of September. That's when Google Play Pass was uh, announced. And it was when it was first announced, that's when people were looking at, at how people uh, would get paid. Um, and within that, one of the things that they were looking at potentially was number of minutes in game mm. versus number of downloads and installs. Uh, because naturally, people that download and install games will mean that Candy Crush will just win because everyone plays Candy Crush because it's massive. Your nan plays it, and she asks you to sign up so she can get free candies or whatever shit that you've all <laughs> that you've all long since blocked on Facebook. Um, but uh, if you're looking at just number of installs, something like Candy Crush would win. If you're looking at number of minutes played, something like Candy Crush would win. There is no way for developers to get through, so it's being creative from Google's side of how they use that to make sure that everyone gets their worth because if not you will just have Candy Crush and and similar games available on the Play Pass which means it's useless to people that want wider range of gaming experiences yeah yeah, I've just tried to find it on my phone anyway in my Google Store, uh, and it's not been promoted there, I'm guessing it was probably a beta thing because uh, I can't, I don't have access to it anyway um, but yeah, uh, it'd be interesting to see. Well, Apple Arcade seems to be doing pretty well, so we'll see how the Google side of things happen. Because I bet you, if that becomes, if they both become big things, there'll be exclusive games being tied behind both of those paywalls. Just to uh, confirm, sorry, I was, I was, I was absolutely one hundred percent not listening to you then. <laughs> That's uh, fine. I was just trying to find. I'm uh, used to it. Answer your questions. Play.google.com is the Play Pass link. Uh, is Google Play Pass available in my country? It's only available in the US. How much does it cost? Four ninety nine a month. Uh, and you can share it with up to six family members. Do I need an Android device? Yes. Uh, so, <laughs> so yeah, there, there you go. Um, so Google Play Pass is currently only available in the US, which is why you've probably not seen it in the store. But they have their own four nine nine version. So yeah, what what was that coin, uh, comment that I didn't listen to then? Hello. Are you there? Yeah. Can you hear me? I said, what was the comment that you just? Uh, mentioned then when i said i wasn't uh, listening sorry you dropped out a little bit there um but oh, uh, what i said was if google and i uh, and 
iTunes or Apple, whatever, uh, go into a kind of uh, Games Pass-ish type battle, I'm fairly certain we're going to see some exclusive games being developed for either one of those platforms and being hidden behind a paywall. Yeah, I, I reckon so. I think I, that's inevitable. You'll start to see one thing that, that does potentially, I mean, and very, brace yourselves, people, we we might say something that's borrowing on positive about Stadia here. <gasps> <laughs> uh, uh, we actually do quite like st- a stadium, or we like the, the concept of it. We mention this all the time. It's just a bit shit, so, and it could be better. Uh, but if if it starts to becoming exclusive territory and things like that, you've got to think if if Google has their own console slash PC level uh, gaming platform, they must be able to start using that as a way to leverage exclusives on the mobile side of things yeah. as well. So you want to play Red Dead on the mobile? Yeah, okay, you can get it on on. Uh, Stadia, but also you can get it exclusively on Play Pass, kind of thing like that, which is is obviously anti-consumer a little bit, but um, yeah, that, is, that as an industry, as an area, is just it's 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 undeveloped. Uh, it's only available in the US at the moment, so clearly massively undeveloped. But just looking at Google Play Pass, there's quite a lot there. Um, Limbo, which Luke's played through um, for Halloween on mm-hmm. ice cream uploads. Uh, Star Wars, Knights of the Old Republic, and things that are all included with it. Uh, Reigns, Game of Thrones game, uh, Risk from Hasbro. This, so this, and Thomas and Friends race on, ladies and gentlemen. Thomas the Tank Engine. <laughs> but yeah, it's, it's good to see such a huge spread in it. I mean, there is uh, things like Terraria and Stardew Valley and uh, stuff like that in it. So there, there, is, there are some some big games within that. So yeah, yeah. interesting, interesting, interesting. But anyway. We have waffled for for a very very long time, ladies and gentlemen. If you want to check out Google Play, make sure you check out Play uh, Google Play Pass. That's play.google.com. Uh, that is the link for it. If you want to check it out for yourselves. But we are done for today. This has been Wednesday's edition of the Scoop. Obviously, we will turn this into an on-demand video podcast that will be live on YouTube approximately an hour or so after the stream ends. Obviously, you can watch it back straight away on Twitch. Just go back to our previous broadcasts, uh, and then. Later on in the day, we will upload the audio version of the podcast to our four audio services. If you want to know what the links are for those, I'm not going to tell you. I told you already. But you can find them yeah. on Twitter.com. So just search for at Ice Cream Uploads on Twitter, and we will post all of the links to the video uh, podcast and all of the audio podcasts as the day goes on. Once they're all live, you will be informed right there. Uh, but yes, that's it from us. That is day three of the scoop from this week. We will be back at 10 a.m. brightly and sprightly. Um, once again, from this home slash uh, cave setup where the baby arena is. Um, and hopefully, hopefully, we, we'll, we'll get you back into the Ice Cream Upload studio on Friday. If not, we'll have one more day potentially of, of being in the cave. Uh, <laughs> but but it, it's good, it's good. You, you might not notice any differences straight away when we do get back into the studio. I just want to clarify that. It's just so that we can make it future-proofing, so that if we want to do Absolutely. change things around, if we want to be a bit more flexible with the broadcast, we want to add some new elements in, we can do all that on the fly, and it just makes it a little bit easier. But I think that's it from us. Anything you want to add before we disappear, Biberino? Yes. As always, guys, if you do see anything around on social media that you want to get, you want us our opinion on like the Resident Evil stuff today. I mean, that would have been covered anyway, but thank you to everyone that tagged me. Into it. Like, uh, but yeah, if you see anything, feel free to tag either myself, we've got to be in you know, or Graham on social media, Graham underscore day, and including the ice cream uploads as well. Obviously, we keep an eye on them because it's our channel. Um, yeah. So yeah, feel free to do that, and we will be talking about it the very next day. Lovely. So there, that's it, ladies and gentlemen. Day three of the scoop for this week. Wednesday is in the bag. We will be back 10 a.m tomorrow morning. Until then, have yourselves a lovely day and stay frosty.